In this video, we take a deeper look into the idea of idiosyncratic risk. Idiosyncratic risk, as we said, is firm specific. So what types of risk does a firm face and what types of mitigation might the company be able to do and how might investors be impacted by firm specific risk and uh, what impact might that have on their decision making process, especially later with respect to asset allocation across a diversified portfolio. So if you want to talk about idiosyncratic risk, Stick around and we'll get into it. What do the following situations all have in common? A catastrophic product failure that results in the loss of confidence by the company's customers, such as the Tylenol scare in the early 1980s. A CEO scandal bringing the company's ethics into question, such as the Wells Fargo situation from 2016. A major product launch failure like New Coke in 1985. A security failure causing customers to be skeptical of conducting commerce with the company in question, such as the Target breach in 2014. They are all situations in which the company in question was hurt, in most cases pretty badly, but the competition went unscathed by the scandal. This is the nature of idiosyncratic risk. It is micro or firm specific risk that can be avoided if you're lucky enough not to own the stock of the company going through the scandal at the moment. Idiosyncratic risk is firm specific. It might extend a little more broadly, like to an industry or a market or a group of companies that share something in common, but ordinarily we think of idiosyncratic risk as firm specific risk. Does firm specific risk always have to be a bad thing? Of course not. Think about the impact COVID had on businesses in 2020. Sure, some businesses were badly hurt by the pandemic. The entire travel and tourism industry found themselves in a fight for survival. But other companies such as Walmart, Target, and most of all, Amazon, benefited from the outbreak. Early in the pandemic, people wanted to stockpile supplies. Throughout the pandemic, people wanted products delivered to their homes so they didn't have to go out and potentially expose themselves while shopping. Any retailer that sold basic supplies, but especially those who delivered, did well. Walmart's annual sales increased by 7% over the year prior to the pandemic, which was the best year-over-year -year growth the company had had experienced in several years. Amazon's year-over-year -year sales were 34% higher than they were the, in the year before the pandemic. Some basic consumer products companies also did well. Kimberly Clark, a maker of paper-based consumer products, could not produce toilet paper fast enough to meet demand. 2020 marked the best year in the company's history for sales and it reversed a recent trend of shrinkage by the company. We assume idiosyncratic risk is bi-directional. So on the bright side, if you invested in that one generational stock and did not diversify away some of the risk, your profits would be astronomical. Imagine having put your entire investment fund into Apple in 1982 or Bitcoin in 2010. You would have been glad to have that much upside risk. However, for every Apple or Bitcoin, there are stories of startups that failed, and you certainly would not want to have been fully invested in one of those when they went bankrupt. So in general, we think that diversifying or spreading your investment fund across multiple different investments is the safer alternative. And later, we will measure the trade-off between risk and return. But for now, just understand that per unit of risk, the returns are better with diversified portfolios because they reduce the impact idiosyncratic risk has on the portfolio. We will go much deeper into portfolio optimization over the next few weeks.